We're going to get a choir book and turn to 6B. 6B. And y'all stand and sing with me. We're going to start out with the chorus and get warmed up with the chorus. And once we get it right, then we'll take off with the verses. 6B. y'all being here this morning for a first communion service and lunch in a year and a half and I appreciate y'all being here and being supportive of it I'm reading out of Matthew 26 for the sermon um, so turn to Matthew 26 and I'll read the whole narrative of the, the last supper and the time before that Matthew 26, and begin reading with, well, where am I beginning reading? Wait, wait, hold, 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 hold on just a minute. What? I need to get, I'm getting reading verse 1, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, verse 1. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to have to start getting, making me better notes or something. I can't remember what I'm doing anymore. All right, I'm getting verse 1. 
and then we'll read down to verse 30. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. I was getting my verses and chapters all mixed up. It all ran together with me. But, okay, I'm preaching on this subject for sinners such as me and you. Amen? For sinners. The Lord did this for sinners for such as me and you. And we find this, chapter 26, verse 1 of Matthew. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. But they said, Not on feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box full of precious ointment, and poured it on his head, and he sat at meat. And when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but ye have me, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest and said unto him, What will you give me that I may deliver him unto you? And they coveted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he saw opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples." And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It hath been good that that man, if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave to the disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. For sinners such as you and I, or you and me, the Lord did this. Let's bring thoughts on that right after Andrew comes to the mic and leads a prayer. God, thank you for this communion Sunday. And just please help us all remember him. And if there's anyone not saved today, just please let them come to repentance and really experience the glory of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me say as we read this scripture tonight, this night changed all history right here. This is it, most important night and morning to follow that ever would be in time that changed history, that changed lives, that even changes you and I life. Had Jesus Christ not come here this night to this Last Supper,
for uh, and, and, and shared this meal and gone on the cross the next day. Do you realize that none of us here might have never even known each other? Oh, we might have all lived here and without we might have seen each other in the grocery store and I might have said, Boy, that fellow right there, he sure is tall and ugly. And it'd been in Kenneth Pruitt, but he wouldn't been my brother in Christ, you know. He just been some tall, ugly guy from Auburn, you know. Or uh, long I could say some more comments about some of the rest of y'all, but I won't. I'll just stick with Kenneth. Okay. But uh uh, we'd have never, we would be sitting here in this church think of how your life has changed think of how our world has changed because of what happened here tonight and think of the sacrifice and we're here, I'm not here to lift myself up I'm not here to lift up the name of New Hope Baptist I'm here to name, lift up the name of Jesus Christ because He is worthy and for sinners such as you and I sinners like us He did what He did this night and the next day and I look in this story at all the different characters in this story, and I think about how they all in some way or not represent all of us today. And that's just what I want to talk about. The ones in this story, he did this. Thank God he gave his blood and the, his flesh for these people, and he done it for you too. Let's think about this just a minute. Let me say, first of all, in this story, we have the leaders of the Jews. And these men baffle me because that... For hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of years, these Jewish leaders had read that Old Testament and had looked for their Savior, had looked for their Messiah. And they had talked about it in the temple. When the Messiah comes, this is going to happen in this. And they quoted those verses. And you realize that the Jewish people, the Hasidic Jews even today, they memorize great, great portions of the Old Testament, even the whole Torah, and they can say it word by word. I've been to the Wailing Wall, which is the wall of the temple today when I went to Jerusalem, and I've seen the Hasidic Jews. Now, I mean no disrespect for this, it just is sad to me. They, they, they sit there and they have phylacteries they call, they have little boxes on their forehead and pockets on their sleeves where they slip the verses that Moses wrote and they sit there and quote them by heart and they chant and write their heads back and forth while they pray and quote those verses. They quote those verses about the Messiah that will come to save them. The Messiah came, they missed it. They rejected him and they're still looking for a day or a man that came 2,000 years ago. And what was their motive behind all this? What was their sin? Their motives were, they said in this story, they sought a chance to kill him. Think about how backwards the world is. They sought a chance to kill him, the one they had been looking for for hundreds of years. This country was eat up with sickness. We're here in this scene where, the, where this story takes place. They're at the house of Simon the leper. Simon was a leper, but he wasn't a leper anymore because Jesus had healed him. Why? Jesus healed him. Simon the leper that no one wanted to enter his home, didn't want to be around, including all the other hundreds of lepers. They ran from him. They put him in a leper's cot. It wouldn't be one if some man could cure leprosy. A man did cure leprosy. And what did they want to do? They wanted to kill him. Think about that. They had prostitutes on the street. John chapter 8, a woman taken in adultery. Wouldn't it be good if we could clean up the streets and get rid of prostitution? And there was a man that could do that. Because she wasn't a prostitute no more after she met Jesus and Jesus rode in the sound. He got the prostitutes off the street. He got the lepers off the street. How could you do so much good? And what was their reaction to it? They wanted to kill him. Do you not see how backwards and mixed up and filthy human nature is? All for pride and jealousy and political power. And I want you to tell me, I'm going to tell you one thing right now, folks. Okay? I want to say this right now. Political pride is still bringing pride and jealousy and hunger for power. That is the truth. I want to tell you. And I'm not here to bash or to lift up your favorite party, your candidate that went to Washington. But in my opinion, we have been very let down by both parties and much of our leaders. In my opinion, not all, but many. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm going to tell you why. Because the motive, many times, way too many times, is not to serve a country called America. It is to get rich and line your pockets with those that special interest groups and lobbyists give you. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just telling you the truth. Brother Ted, which side of the aisle does that? They both do it. 
I'm telling you, human nature hadn't changed. It says in 1 John, it talks about the sins of mankind. It says the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh, the pride of life is still making one man want to be above another man and have power and not to serve that man, but to have power to line his pockets and, and, and make a name. We're not here to make a name for nobody but the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only one we're here to make a name for. Amen. I might not ever be in the history books. I'm quite sure I won't. Somebody will walk by my gravestone one day. Ted, Ted who? I don't know. You know him. I didn't know him. It don't matter. As long as Jesus Christ gets the glory out of your life, then your life has been a success. You don't need the pride of life. You don't need to be another man or be important to be something. You are something if you point men to the one that is something. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But these Leaders wanted to kill him. They wanted power and fame for themselves. And a man that could do more than they could do, they wanted his life ended. That's right. For sinners such as you and I, we've all right in there. Can you believe Jesus died for these leaders that wanted to kill him because not the bad he had done, but the good he had done. But Jesus went to the cross and paid for their sins. Let's go a little bit farther in the story, if you will. How about old Simon? Simon the leper. If any of y'all, I'm sure most of you have. If not, you need to watch it. The old movie, Ben-Hur. Don't read the book. The book's horrible. <laughs> most time I tell you the book's better. Don't read that, and that's horrible. But the, the movie, Ben-Hur with Charlton Heston, if you haven't watched it, then y'all got an assignment to do. You need to watch that. It's a movie during the life of Christ, but not about the life of Christ. I'm just curious right now. We're taking a movie poll. See, I'm selling, I'm selling movie time. How many of y'all have, have, have seen Ben-Hur? I have some hands not up here. Y'all got work to do, all right? Do it just because you're hurt today. But in Ben-Hur, Ben-Hur's mom and sister become lepers, and they have to take them to a leper colony. And it's just plumb. It, it's just plumb. It scared the way people were afraid of those lepers. And it's almost the same thing, though that was a much greater degree. I know the thing we have with the COVID-19 going around. I mean, somebody that's caught it, everybody's scared to get within 500 foot of them, you know. <laughs> but, of course, that's curable, and it does. Leprosy was not curable. But they would make up people go live in leper colonies in holes down in caves and where they'd have no, no, no contact ever, ever again, not just for two weeks, quarantine ever again with society, you know. And, but, and here is a man, I mean, that, so what I'm talking about here in this story, we have represented the sickness of a heart. That was our leaders. This man had sickness of the body. Sickness of the body. But I'm told that Jesus Christ came, it says in Isaiah, by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. He came to heal the sick for sinners such as you and I. He came to heal us. Amen. Oh, I tell you what's the truth. We've... I've, many people has been on our prayer list got healed. Some been on prayer list and really got healed. They went to heaven. And that's the best healing of them all, isn't it? Amen. Brother Jack, I, I know I pray for Brother Jack. It's so, so good to have Jack and Mary back. I feel for you. You're really going to get healed one day. You're going to get, you're going to get healed. You're going to be like a, like a young man like you used to be right? once again. But I'm, I'm told for sinners such as you and I, for sick people such as Simon, the Lord Jesus came with a cure for the heart and the body. For sinners, for folks like us, He come to touch us, heal us, forgive us, save us. That's what this communion service is to remind us of. Because others that people said, send that old boy to the leper colony. Jesus said, no, we not. Go home, and I'm coming in to eat at your house. Oh, I thank God, Brother Jeff, when we, when we are the most defiled by the things of this world, the Lord Jesus will come sit down at the table with us. Aren't you thankful for that? Amen. Oh, I'm thankful not for us. This one's as just as you and I, we have this communion table that reminds us that when other mankind rejected us and said we were no good and useless and sinful, the Lord Jesus loved us and looked past that. He did it for these leaders. Right down, he would forgive them to the end. He did it for old Simon the Lever. Then let's go on down. Here's Tad Moore. I see another fellow I want to talk about that represents us. Judas Iscariot. Judas. Possibly the most educated and the most talented and the smartest of all the disciples. 
Why you say that, Brother Ted? Because he was their treasurer, you see. They wouldn't have put money in Simon's and Peter's hands. Well, he could count fish. I don't know if he could keep up with a bank account, you know. I would ask y'all how many of this morning about your bank account every month, but I'm not going to that. I didn't ask you about watching a movie. I'm not going to watch it. But you'd be surprised how many folks don't know how to bounce a bank account. You'd be surprised. But we're not getting into that. But this Judas, he could. He could bounce a bank account. He could bounce a bank account of the whole bank. I mean, he was brilliant with numbers. And he was so much that the disciples had made him the treasure when they took up money to hold the money to buy food and all that. He was the one. I mean, what a shame it is a lot of time in life that the people with the most talent and the most gifts that could be something good in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ let the devil take their talents and their gifts and destroy them. I'm telling you. The ones that could do the most good for Christ end up the biggest failures because their talents go to their pride and to their greed rather than to the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says here, for 30 pieces of silver, for 30 pieces of silver, he betrays the Lord Jesus Christ. What was you going to do with 30 pieces of silver? I don't one thing, it wasn't worth giving up your soul for whatever he's going to do with that 30 pieces of silver. It wasn't worth the cost. Do y'all agree with that? You know, this thing, I, I don't get on politics. Let me just say one word about this thing with the, with the George Floyd murder and all that. I, I feel with all my heart that was justice and right, that he went to prison. I feel that on my heart. But there again, on the other hand, I don't feel like the decision in that trial was trying time to celebrate and cheer. Because you know who won in that case? Nobody. Nobody won. You got two men, their families loved them. They both lost. Two lost lives. One of them to death. Another one probably never get out of prison. Think about that. You got a p- police officer, I'm sure with a lot of talents, you know, that wasted and gone forever. And I don't like to hear people get down on police. I don't like to hear that. Of course, if that was my family member, it happened to, I'd be down on two. But I'm going to tell you what's true. You come along about 11 o'clock at night down Sugarloaf Highway, and there's a wreck, and it's pitch dark, and it's raining, and there's a wrecker there, and there's two, three police cars with their lights on trying to direct traffic. Do you realize what a responsibility and job those men and women serve? Do you realize that? Do you realize the danger they put their lives in to help us every day? But it's the old thing, it's the old thing, the old saying one bad apple spoils a whole bunch. And that's not right. Just because one preacher committed adultery, I ain't done it. Just because one preacher stole the church's money, I ain't done it. But I've seen people that wouldn't come to church. I remember one family, we was visiting one time, not me and Jeff, this was, this was up at Pleasant Grove actually. We invited the, and uh, the, the husband said, what kind of church y'all are y'all? I said, we'd solve this country church. No, I mean like what name? I said, Baptist, we ain't coming. I said, okay. You mind telling me what? Because we was at a Baptist church back when we first married. That Baptist pastor tried to sleep with my wife. He propositioned her. Well, I'm sorry some nut somewhere did something wrong, but I ain't propositioning your wife. Why you thought, why you black giving me a black ball? You know what I'm saying? That's the way folks do. I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to tell you that no, nobody won in that thing. Nobody won. One, one family they lost to death, their loved one. Another family of America lost what could have been a great cop, and we sure need great cops on the street. I mean, so society lost, and that family lost their loved one to prison. There's nothing to celebrate about that. What I'm talking about is a sad thing. And I'm telling you right here, who, who, uh, 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 Judas, he probably went away from that temple. He's shaking that thing. He's rattling them coins, you know. You know how when you feel rich and you, when, when I was a kid, you know, if, if you felt rich, you rattle your pocket and you could hear your change. Now pocket change won't even buy you a Coca-Cola, much less nothing else, you know. He's rattling that. He said, boy, I've won. I've won. I'm going to tell you what, he hadn't won. He had lost and throw away all things. Why? For the greed of a moment. But how many people have thrown away the Lord Jesus Christ, rejected Him out of the life because of the greed of life. Amen. Because of the greed of life. Somebody be faithful and good in church so they get, so God blesses them with a boat. 
And there is nothing in and of itself wrong with a boat. If you're out there on Saturday. But if you're out there boating on Sunday, if the thing flips over, I ain't going to feel sorry for you. I'm going to wear a life jacket, all right? But I've seen so many people that are faithful to God until God blesses them with a couple of toys and they never come back to church. Judas tried to be a disciple, but when 30 pieces of silver was waved in his face, it was over with. Oh, we throw away the things of God for money still today. He threw away his life, his position as a disciple, his soul over the over the, 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 the over greed. Greed. The Jewish leaders here, their sin is pride and jealousy. Simon, it wasn't a sin, but it was deathly sickness. Judas, it was greed. But I want to tell you one, for every one of them things, Jesus Christ gave his body and blood. And everything I mentioned today, maybe not in full pretense, uh, full part, but in pretense, we've all sinned these sins. We've all had the sin of pride and jealousy. We've all, we've all had the sin of, 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 of greed or something other than life. There is no sinner in this Bible uh, that we are above any of them. Do y'all know what I'm saying? But the thing that I'm most amazed about when I read this this morning, that after seeing mankind and everybody that Christ came in contact with in his life, he was still willing the next morning to go to the cross, knowing who he was dying for and how unworthy we all are. Then let's talk before we hush up here and go to communion about these disciples. These disciples, other 11 in this story, done nothing wrong. But they're going to do something wrong the next day. They're all going to get afraid and run. That's right. They're going to run. Fear. Fear. Men, Jesus trained to be disciples. And when they tried him, only John was the only one brave enough to go stand with him. When he went to the cross, only John was brave enough to be there. The rest of them's hiding. Some's hiding. Peter's denying and cursing. I mean... Boy, I'm going to tell you right now, people you have confidence in will let you down. <laughs> That's just the truth. Put your confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't put it in man. These men let Jesus down the next day because they were scared. <clears throat> Amen. I'm not putting myself above any of them. Had I, had I seen, if I'd, I'd been one of the disciples and seen them taking Christ to the cross, they thought we're going to be next. We're going to be next. We better hide. We better disassociate ourselves with that man called Jesus so they'll put us on a cross next to him but fear and cowardice. And how many times have you and I been afraid to open our mouth for the Lord Jesus? Been afraid to serve the Lord Jesus Christ? God said, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. But how many times has fear over what somebody thinks, fear over what somebody's going to do, fear over what this is going to cost me, how many times has that caused us to tuck our tail between our legs and run when Jesus Christ needed us? How many times? When he needs us to speak up for him. How many times? I'm going to tell you right now, folks, when I read this chapter, everybody, there wasn't a one in this whole chapter. I mean, none of these fellows in this chapter, the Lord, that deserved the Lord's death. And I look in this building this morning, I'd like to say, when we're going to have his communion here, y'all, y'all unworthy, except Mark Goss. He's worthy. No, Mark, I can't say that. You big as rascal as the rest of us. Let's just tell the truth. When I see sinners in the Bible and those that treated Jesus with such disloyalty and such fear and such disrespect and and chose money over, over their friend and all of that, I don't see nobody but me and you, every one of us. But for thank God, he went ahead and died for us anyway. And that's what, that's what this communion table we're just about to come to is. Amen. I just want you to get a new, renewed respect, appreciation, and love for the Son of God this morning. Because all these sins I've named, and we can name them all afternoon, we're all guilty. But it's for the guilty person he give his body and blood. Amen. And we come right down to this, and the deacons are just about to come, but I want Mark to have an invitation song. Amen. We come right down to it, and it says, if I can find my place again now, y'all hold on a minute. Uh, It says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and the cup, and that's where we're about to come to. Amen. He took bread, and he took the cup. Amen. Amen. Have you ever seen someone you was going to do something nice for, then they let you down and you said, forget it? You ever seen that happen? Yeah, you have. Not Jesus. In spite of all done wrong to him, throughout these four Gospels, even in this chapter, he took bread and he took the cup. 
And he said, here's my body and blood for you. Mark, get a song. It's always the right thing to do to have an invitation before communion. An invitation to say if there's something wrong in your heart, make it right. I'm going to read this Matthew script today, but in Corinthians it talks about don't take of his body or blood.